Ellie new team here, Kaizi Gaming. Definitely yes. a pretty awesome pickup for any team, but Kaizi with a one there, uh, getting to snatch him and hopefully filling in a bit of that void that was left by Innovation on that roster, which if anybody's going to fill in those boots, I think Reyna's more than good a fit. <laughs> Absolutely. You know one of my favorite things, by the way, Ben, now, it would the way that the minimap works, where we have this wonderful, wonderful map uh, mod where we can see where the players are looking. I just love the first few minutes of the game where you just see it spiking everywhere <laughs> as they cycle through lo camera location hockeys. It's actually it's actually quite enjoyable to watch. I, I was just thinking about players that still don't use them. And it's like, wow, that must be so <laughs> relaxing seeing their like their square just kind of move around methodically as opposed to like just kind of sprinting here, there and everywhere. Um, but yeah. All right, so how's this game going to start off? Battle B didn't go for an SV scout at all. So any sort of pool first shenanigans could have definitely been a little bit gnarly against him. We'll go for the barracks into gas build, though. Very, very standard. And Raynor just going for a hatch first, just making sure that he isn't getting a bunker rush there with a little bit of a cheeky drone moving out to front. Standard is as standard does so far. Yeah, nothing too crazy. And I think it's going to be something we'll have to keep cycling back to because there is the question of tvz is not exactly a forgiving matchup in terms of you know not being able to keep up mechanically especially with someone as mechanically good as rainer rainer is i mean known for how fast he is known for how well he can just play and out multitask his opponents so i think it's a big question on my mind like does battle b try to steer in the direction of some kind of cheese in this game it doesn't really seem to be the case he's going for the three cc opening adding on that reactor the factory and everything like he's looking to go into like a good old macro game yeah and that's kind of what we saw from him against spirit as well he was just mm -hmm. very willing to play very straight up and i was i was a bit like oh okay okay like he was the one being defensive and all that jazz but here three cc he did skip the SCB scout which is a tiny bit of a corner cut there that you see players like clem will never skip that bad boy so he is doing the little things to try and get a little bit of an edge, but following up with something very, very standard, which, ah, respect to the player. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it does excite me when players feel like they, they want to give that the shot, especially against not just good players, but the best players in the world. Because if they can make something happen there, I think that's such a massive confidence boost, right? I think that it's not just a confidence boost for yourself, but I, I feel like more so then cheesing out a win versus a really good player. Well, that can't, like if you cheese out Serral or something in a tournament, that's impressive. But when you just straight up play a macro game and you best Rainer or Serral or Clem or something, like that is what's truly impressive to me. I think that's what also makes a name for yourself. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But I mean, certain players have made a whole career on just being cheesy. Um, yeah. You know, it's worked out for them. Uh, Hass with his second place at a WCS. Everybody knew what was going to come. And it's like, oh, damn, it still worked <laughs> out kind of thing. Still boggles my mind to this day because he actually had one of the hardest roads to get there as well. Uh, but yeah. we do have the Liberator being the weapon of choice here, which is very unusual. This used to be super duper textbook for uh, Terrans out there. But after you go for the Starport, very often it's usually going for like either the Banshee or the Viking. So whipping out the Liberator all of a sudden, this could catch Rainer off guard because because it's so out of the meta, really. Yeah, I think the other player that always comes to mind for me with these Liberator openings is Clem. So I will say Rainer has a lot of experience dealing with it, but is he actually going to be prepared for it against someone like Battle B? And as the first queen does pop out in the main base, there's going to be something there in defense, but... No support calls or anything have actually just been started until Ooh. after the Liberator really shows itself. So one kill kind of comes out on that. Hellions dive very deep into creep. Oh my God, they're actually gonna be taking a lot of damage. And well, I mean, they are trading over some of the lings, but almost every single Hellion dies, Ben. Right, so let's just, let's just reset and look at this. So no drones were killed in mm -hmm. the making of this attack. Like, I, I think one died to something yeah. earlier on, but Reyna just held that very well. We look at the resources loss tab, super duper in his favor. The Liberator's dead as well. And that was Reyna not knowing really what was coming. Just started making a spore as soon as he saw it. Dodged a shot as well, because he's super damn fast and good. And yeah, that's kind of why Liberators aren't really used that much anymore. 
That's pretty brutal too, because if it was just the Liberator getting picked off and the Hellions got pushed back and didn't find damage, but stayed alive, is at least some value you can continue to get with those Hellions. But man, losing all the Hellions, now having that entire count reset does sting because Rainer really doesn't have a whole lot to fear anymore when he's doing this creep spreading. It's actually going to be pretty tough for Battle B to keep that in check. And well, that's going to make it easier for Rainer when he wants to, wants to actually get aggressive. I don't know if I don't know how many Hellions were exactly made by Battle B, but Rainer's getting confirmation anyway on what he's up against. Because I was thinking for a second, hey, kind of could be like Rainer could be thinking it's Mech right now, but he gets confirmation, starts off the melee and carapace upgrades pretty damn nicely. That is still something for Battle B that's absolutely in his favor, is he's going to have a nice upgrade lead here. The thing is, Zerg often don't care too much about the upgrades because Banelings, well, they don't really give a damn about being behind in damage upgrades. <laughs> yeah, but it's definitely helpful for them when they want to go after workers and stuff to have that plus two melee, but they will get there eventually. We do see Battle B is starting to situate himself a little bit further on the map with some of these Marines. Now that he does have Stim and the Medivacs out, he can start to clean up a little bit of the creep, but the Queen's also going to be trying to combat this. Transfuse is coming out nonstop on that Queen. It finally ends up falling. Handful of Marines traded for it in exchange, but uh, I, I still think Ranger's probably going to be a little happier with that. He didn't really end up losing a whole lot in exchange for that. No, he didn't. Battle is actually taking a full CC right now, but... If I look at all the production tab that Rainer's got going here, he's got an infestation pit on the way. He's already on 88 drones. The Banelings will do more than enough to take care of this. And Widow Mines are here as well. Uh, getting a couple of shots off on the Lings and what have you. Rainer has to be careful that he has enough Banelings because Banelings are the key to stopping this. Yep. And uh, with both the Widow Mines already getting set off, it looks like in some ways they could be vulnerable, but I'm actually not sure if Raider remembers or noticed that the Widow Mines are still there and that they're still alive and didn't just die during the earlier attack. So might actually be able to get another couple of shots off. Marine's going to continue to try and clean up some of the creep spread as they kite further back up to the top left. And well, Raynor going to be taking a little bit of damage here and there, but overall, that even with the attacks happening on this front, Rainer is getting the creep further spread forward. And that that's the scariest thing to me, Ben, is that normally when a Terran player is attacking, the creep starts to recede in the direction of the Terran player is attacking. It oh. feels like it's the opposite right now. My goodness, that went mine shot. Went onto the Overseer and then he got pulled back into his own army. That did a lot of damage. That was a little uncharacteristic, but that is like the best little win that Battle Bees had this game. I've also mm -hmm. been looking at the production tab. Like, Battle Bee hasn't been missing a beat. He saw his 2-2 real damn fast. And he started adding on Liberators as well, very quickly. Like, supply-wise, he's actually not looking bad at all, but he has to be so careful right now. Yeah, he's trying to find some openings over here. And I, I think absolutely to your point, I feel like Battle B is playing really well in a lot of ways, but it's just in the actual trades themselves, I don't really feel like he's finding a whole lot at the time that the Terran players really want to. And you're starting to see he's kind of just getting pushed back on every single front. He's going to be losing a lot of the Medivacs in exchange on these couple of trades. Yeah, if I said he had any window, it's like a 2-2 timing because he will be mm -hmm. way further ahead than Raynor on that front. Hive is finished. So Raynor can start thinking about adding on Lurkers and things like that, getting the big upgrades going uh, from his tier three. And Battle B, like he's got his fourth base set up. He put a sense tower on it as well. Um, it's going to be difficult for him, but there is a window. There is hope. It's just he has to have everything go right for him from this point on. Yeah, he's going to be trying to knock down the rocks so he can maybe open up another pathway that he can start attacking in from. Like the Liberator Harassment, this is actually going to go somewhat unnoticed as Rainer will end up losing a handful of these workers. Finally, this ends up pulling some of those workers away. And this is going to force at least a few more APM oh, intensive right in the middle. to go to the side. Oh, okay, okay. So some engagements happening in the middle here. Mm. New drones are going down. Batterby has that 2-2 two -two now, but he has his only AoE is six Widow Mines. He has one tank, 69 Marines on the field. That And fighting on creep, which is kind of forced to, he has to yeah. take such good engagements here, but that's a lot of Zerg, Ravi. Lings do the wraparound, although the Marines are able to pick off a majority of them. Banelings looking for connections finally off of creep, and it looks like the Marines aren't going to be able to get away, I want to say safely, but a handful of them did end up dying. I feel like half of the Marines are already gone at this point, and the 2-2 upgrades for Raynor about to finish up. 
He's also buying himself some time to get some more Banelings up. The biggest thing I think that Battle Bee was able to do, though, is he cleaned up a ton of creep spread during all of that. So this is maybe going to be his second win. He needs some good Widow Mine connections. That's a pretty good one. I mean, some not so bad starts there, but at the end of the day, Rainer just has a little bit too much. Like, they're, they're not the worst trades. The thing is, when you're a Terran with equal resources lost with a Zerg, that's not good for you at all. And I mean, these Widow Mines are doing a good job of just getting these random little hits going. It's just, what is the end goal? Because the Terran wants to be kind of ahead, kind of wounding the Zerg getting into the late game, not getting himself almost wounded in this situation, which, yeah, like, it, you, if you don't slow down the Zerg, you're, you're just slowing down yourself in a weird kind of way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it, is that Battleby has been trying to accomplish a bit more aggression, and he hasn't really been getting the, quite the trades that he wants to get with all this. And, he is going to have to escape out of here. Oh, those parasitic bombs on the healthy or the full medevacs. One of them ends up going down. A lot of units end up falling with it. And Rainer's maxed out. He's got a little bit of a bank starting to build up. He's getting up his lurker den that's about to finish up. He has a spire on the way. And now Battleby, most of his aggression has been pushed back. So Battleby may try to get out on the map again. But I think that's actually going to start getting dangerous now because Rainer's the one looking to get aggressive at long last. Certainly is, and that's a lot of Zerg. And look at his bank as well. He's got money for days, 89 drones, and just a lot of stuff that just can't kill what he has. Like even the Vipers mm -hmm. coming in very handy this game with the bombs, the abducts, more Banelings as well. Look at Battle Beast Supply. It's just not there. He was getting ready for a stage of the game that was never going to come, which is battling the Lurkers. And we see the upgrades coming, but Reno's having none of it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, a valiant effort there from Battle B. Rainer comes out on top. It it really does just feel like it's one of those unfortunate situations where Battle B is actually playing really damn well. By most normal standards of any other like average pro player and everything, I'd say Battle B is playing really damn well. But it's just when you're facing off against someone like Rainer, who's literally been a world champion, it's kind of a different bar you get held to. And it also, unfortunately, makes you look a little bit worse when you're facing off against someone like that. So uh, I, I just got to say kudos to Battle because I, I really do like a lot of what he was able to do. It's just when you're doing it against Raynor, you, it just doesn't look quite as impressive as it normally would. He was sniping a lot of Banes in these little engagements. Like um, you, you saw it, which it's not easy to do that at all. Um, as, as soon as you start playing a game with Raynor, though, where the early game doesn't go your way. So he lost the Liberator and like a bunch of Hellions didn't deal any damage. He didn't get to do anything. You're already fighting such an uphill battle. Like it's, it's so ridiculously important that you try and get something done or keep those Hellions out and alive. Whereas both of them got thwarted. And we're gonna be moving on to Curious Minds here, which is a smaller, probably better Terra map when it comes to this matchup. Uh, but yeah, Battle B has to have the early game go his way and not like it did in the prior one. Otherwise, we're going to see kind of the same situation happen where Reyna just, just gets going. He's so hard to stop. Yeah, I, that's a good way of putting it, especially, is Reyna just kind of got to get going and there wasn't really a whole lot stopping him. We're going to see if that's going to happen again as we move, like you said, into Curious Minds, the top of the Red Zerg player. He is Reyna. Pisy Gaming setting up 1 0. And spawning over in the bottom right is our blue Terran. It is Battleb. <laughs> I got a little chuckle out of you. I liked it. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. You'll always get you'll always get the chuckle out of me for mispronouncing names, Ben. You know, there's gonna be that person as well that's watching that's just like, oh, I'm so mad at this commentator that said this, like, how do you see them? I, I know it's battle B, dude. I, I can read, but still, but still, battle lab it is. Rignor. Re re you know. We can't yeah, we can't we can't really butcher a Raynor too well though. R Aner. Yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, the ones you can do with Rainer are a lot less creative. <laughs> Absolutely. Rain or sunshine. Rain or shine. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. There That's we go. my go-to pun with Rainer. That is absolutely my go-to pun with Rainer is Rain or shine. Oh my God, I'm turning into Ravi. <laughs> this is how it happens. <laughs> this is how it began. And this is... Oh. I mean, you know, you're the one that's most eligible to do it, though, because you are actually a dad. You're allowed... 
you're biologically allowed to make dad jokes now. I'm also, uh, I'm getting fat, Ravi. I'm getting a dad bod. A <laughs> dad bod? Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm starting to not get fat, shaped like a feeling, pear. You're just, you're just filling your belly with love. Uh, that, I mean, that's a nice way of putting it, but... And I guess I'm way more cuddly now, but... I don't feel you good when I feel myself shake when I walk down the stairs and stuff. You know what I'm saying, Ravi? Oh, I, I feel you on that, man. I feel you on that. COVID, COVID was not... The first two years of COVID were not kind to me. <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> all righty, all righty. So this game, Reaper goes across the map. Did he do... He still no SCV scout early on. That would be definitely a ballsier man that I am, because I am absolutely all about that SCV scout life. Ever since I saw Clem mm -hmm. doing it every game and getting away with it, and, you know, just better safe than sorry kind of thing. But Reyna so far does a decent job of deflecting this Reaper for no real damage. The Reaper obviously gets there a little bit faster on this map because it is shorter. All things said and done, that'll be going for a 3cc, and yet again. Yep, feels like that was not necessarily the thing that needed to change up. And in a lot of ways, I do think that he still did a very good job with that kind of opening and stuff. The, one of the big differences that I would like to see is if he does decide to go for something like a Liberator opening or something again, I don't know if we'll actually end up seeing that again, but just whatever you end up doing, just doing things like keeping your Hellions alive, not diving too deep for that so you can keep creep spreading check, which then actually enforces the ability for your Marine drop later on with the medevacs to actually get a little more damage done because there's less creep. And it's just all these things can definitely start snowballing with the momentum of a TVZ. So yeah, keeping an eye out for that earlier stage of the game, I think can make a big difference for later. Oh yeah, certainly, certainly. I think... I, I often get myself in a situation where I'm like, hey, I don't get this opportunity every day. Can it work? And sometimes mm -hmm. I will do the same thing again. Like, even though it went horribly the first time, just to, mm -hmm. you know, confirm or deny, because sometimes it can work terribly and then it can be great. And it's like, all right, all right. It's good that I know that I can do this at least sometimes. So I'm not mm -hmm. looking at this being like, hey, I think you're super silly for doing this again. I, I, I want to see it work out in the way that he's obviously practiced it to, because... Yeah, yeah, he has been good. Um, and the first game was a super hard shutdown. This is a better map for Terran in general. That third base super open to these Hellion attacks. Let's see what it can actually do. Yeah, 100%. I mean, uh, of course, Battleby is going to try his absolute darndest to win this. But in some ways, this is also a uh, a best of three that Rainer is being paid to play practice games with Battleby for, right? Like, so you can confirm how well this is going to work out, if you can get some better experience and stuff from this. And absolutely, I think that's a great way to try and take advantage of the time for this. But a Battle B is going to be in it to win it. We'll see what he can make happen. Hellion's going to dive on forward past all the Queens yet again. Zorglin's trying to come in for a surround. They do manage to claw in one of those Hellions. Liberator also still getting set up, going in, in a very interesting uh -oh. path. And oh, it takes a lot of damage. This is not the way Battle B wanted this to go. Mm. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. I think Battle B is th that feeling starting to sink in where it's like, maybe this Liberator opening isn't the best. And, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I remember going through a phase like this as well, where there's certain things that I love. For example, the good old Terran 2 on 1 when Beyond was doing it back, back in like 2015 16 and winning, uh, y you know, BlizzCons and what have you. But there came a time when it was like, okay. Got to throw in the uh, two on one. Can't do it anymore. Until it came back again, very randomly, and again and again and again. But yeah, certain builds just, they're not going to get you ahead. And Rain or this game, by the way, Roach Warren, double Evo. It looks like it's going to be leading up to a massive Roach time in this game. And it's quite the map for it, given mm. how open the third is. Man, that'll be so oh, yeah. aggressive with his Hellions. And he's going to get surrounded over here. He does still have more Hellions than he did in the last game at this stage. But uh, it's just not enough when he gets surrounded like that. He did get info, though, which is a big deal. Got to see yeah. that Roach Warren. But it doesn't mean that the Zerg has to use it, right? Which is a big deal as well. I just hope, for Battlebee's sake, that... Aha, uh -huh, okay, okay. He had the factory on a reactor. And he did switch it to start making a tech lab. That's at least the start to being able to hold off something aggressive like that. So that's a nice little switch up by him. Yeah, it is, it is still going to be a tough spot. When you've lost almost as many Hellions as your opponent has killed Lings, that is a bit of an awkward spot to be in, in terms of making sure you have units ready for the big defensive. And, oh, this Ling run by is also going to complicate matters because 
every little bit of binding, every everything you can muster up is gonna matter when you're holding off a massive attack like Rainer's preparing for. Certainly is, certainly is. And I'll never forget um, Hero Marine talking about some things that you absolutely need to hold off uh, Roach attacks, or at least it's things that help. Get, I think he said getting plus one on your tanks turns the tanks from a three oh. shot to a two shot against them. So getting the armory up and running, getting the second factory, I look to see hopefully some of those things coming online. But look at that creed mm -hmm. spread, Ravi. If you're planning a big Roach Ravager kind of game, which it looks like he is, but also having this sick creed spread, it just starts feeling very, very hopeless when you're in the Terran shoes here. Yeah, I can only imagine uh, the Marines trying to go for a little bit of drop harassment over here. They're going to spot out a handful of the Roaches. They're making their way forward and not a whole lot able to happen over there. Raider gearing up with a Overlord drop. There is a single mar Marine that's pretty close by, but it looks like it is not going to notice this Overlord drop. And this is going to actually get annoying if this happens while Battle B is trying to micro his drop on the other side of the map. This though, this kind of drop here where he sees the army and he's kind of keeping it away from the base while dealing damage, definitely is nice for him. Slowest Overlord drop of all time that actually might <laughs> do quite a lot here. It was definitely hitting at an annoying time while he's fighting at the front. Oh no! Oh! Booby! That, that's painful. That right there is very painful. Siege tank up on the high ground can be doing quite a bit of damage up until the Overseer gives the high ground vision and the Ravager Corrosive Biles end the man's life. Rainer takes a 2-0, looks pretty